Russian media say that more than 30 humanitarian aid trucks have crossed into eastern Ukraine, reportedly carrying food, medicines and generators. It's been more than a week since the Ukrainian president announced that a ceasefire had been agreed with pro-Russian rebels in the region, but fighting in some areas continues. Ukraine says its armed forces have repelled an attack on Donetsk airport by a large group of pro-Russian separatists. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk has accused the Russian President Vladimir Putin of wanting to eliminate Ukraine as an independent country and said that in the long term, only by joining NATO could Ukraine be safe. NATO, in these particular circumstances, is the only vehicle how to protect and defend Ukraine. I do understand that not all NATO members were happy with this kind of statement. But my job is to make happy the people of Ukraine. This is the first point. The second one, I do understand that in a short-term perspective, NATO is not ready to accept Ukraine. But, you know, ask and you will be given. Not necessarily. Well, it's about Bible. And knock and the door will be opened. So, we decided to knock. Well, let's go live now to the east of Ukraine and speak to the BBC's Paul Adams, who's in Donetsk. Um, Paul, what do we know, what do you know about this attack, apparent attack on the airport? James, I wish I could tell you that I know anything definitively. I don't, and I don't think anyone here in the centre of the city does. The airport is around 8 to 10 kilometres in that direction, and I can tell you that we have been hearing the distant sound of gunfire all morning coming from that direction. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but it sounds like artillery and occasionally the firing of Grad multiple rocket launchers. And indeed, at one point last night, there was some firing of Grads much, much closer into the centre of the city. So even though uh, accounts of gunfire out at the airport are a fairly regular occurrence here in Donetsk, it does seem as though something a little more concerted is going on right now. Who exactly is doing it? It's hard to tell. Uh, the rebels say that they have... Uh, pushed into part of the airport. The Ukrainian government says that it has repelled an attack on the airport. And in the last hour or so, the Swedish Foreign Minister, Carl Bildt, has tweeted, are Russian forces trying to capture the airport? If so, a clear violation by Moscow of the ceasefire agreement reached a week ago. But it's very unclear exactly what is going on over there at the airport. What extent that ceasefire is holding? Yeah, we spent uh, much of yesterday uh, in an area called uh, 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 Petrovsky, I'm sorry, which is out to the west of the city, close to uh, Ukrainian government lines. It's an area uh, peppered with residential neighborhoods and some of the coal mines that surround the city of Donetsk. Uh, we were going out there to try and assess the mood of people a week after the ceasefire came into effect. Uh, how are their lives getting back to normal? What do they think about their future prospects? But frankly, we found them far too preoccupied with the ongoing fighting. On the western fringes of Donetsk, a neighborhood called Quiet. For weeks, it's been anything but. We're not far from the front line here. The area has been hit several times. Nerves are shredded. This is a real war, Larissa tells me. Please stop it. And then something you don't hear very often in rebel territory. I'm a Ukrainian woman. Why are my fellow countrymen doing this? But while the shooting continues, other small signs of progress. 72 Ukrainian army and rebel fighters exchanged. Part of the ceasefire agreement reached over a week ago. But months of fighting have left deep scars. At a church in the suburb of Petrovsky, Father Alexander shows the damage to Irina Popova, a local politician. The church was hit last month by a volley of grad rockets. Nearby, 50 people are living in a bomb shelter built for the Cold War. It's crowded and filthy. For a month, it was dark. Some people have been here since June. They're exhausted. 
It's terrible, terrible. There's constant noise, children crying all the time. There's no room to move. You can only go outside for 15 or 20 minutes at a time. Meals are cooked out in the open. People don't stray too far from the bunker's protective walls. No one here trusts the ceasefire or the government in Kiev. We asked for peace talks. Kiev has told us many times about decentralization, but they've never said what they mean. They're talking a lot, but doing nothing. All they're doing is destroying. A sudden volley of gunfire sends people back underground. It's not clear who's shooting at who, but some of the rounds are landing nearby. Well, it's hardly surprising that people, it's hardly surprising that the people living here in the bomb shelter are reluctant to come out even a week after the ceasefire was declared. That volley of gunfire lasted a couple of minutes and it was fairly close by. A reminder that this place is still not safe. A week after a ceasefire was declared, the sounds and the scents of war linger. Peace has not yet come and there's absolutely no guarantee that it will. Well, as the sound of gunfire continues to reverberate from the direction of the airport, we are being told by the authorities here that there is no order to storm the airport. So I'm afraid to say the situation out there in a place which has been contested for so many months remains very unclear this morning. Paul, thanks very much. Paul Adams there in Donetsk.